Welcome back to Six Questions in Six Minutes. Ish. Where I ask public historians half a dozen questions and they try to answer them in six minutes. We're still in our COVID worldwide lockdown reality, so let's turn on the webcam and see who's going to answer our questions today. Welcome to Six Questions. First off, who are you? My name is Dean Oliver. I'm the Senior Director for Research at the Canadian Museum of History, where I'm also the Chief Curator. How did you end up where you are? Uh, I wound up where I am, I would say, largely through uh, spirited accidents. Uh, I had set out with every intention as an undergraduate to be an international lawyer, uh, to add uh, to that deep pool of high talent. And I wound up uh, loving history and political science uh, and pursuing all of that with uh, great vigor uh, and having thousands of times to answer the question of my friends and family in Newfoundland, what are you going to do with that degree by? Uh, I had the plan as I set out that I wanted to know a little bit about everything. Uh, that has, I've succeeded in that, but the concomitant was I know a lot about nothing. And so I did an undergraduate degree in the 19th century, uh, 19th century subject, a uh, um, master's degree on the First World War, a PhD on the Second World War, and a postdoctoral fellowship on the Cold War, making me qualified to lose on many, many, many different uh, levels in trivial pursuit. But it did prepare me uh, wonderfully well, actually, for work in museums and collecting across the vast uh, gamut of subjects that came up and being able to talk with uh, at least a minimal amount of authority on a large uh, range of topics. And it's also been, over the course of uh, 25 or 30 years, great fun. What's the nature of your work? The nature of my work is quite diverse. Uh, there are some things that uh, the public would know a lot about the work of a public historian in a museum, the most obvious to which is exhibitions, uh, either the vast and vast semi-permanent ones that they see most of the time when they come to the building or the temporary ones that uh, come and go. Uh, generally speaking, my team and I are responsible for the research, the content, the selection of the materials that go into those projects. But there are also all kinds of other things that we do in, um, in uh, work in the museum and the many disciplines that work there. There are about 11 or 12 disciplines that work in my unit, ranging from archaeology and anthropology through to the history and ethnology and cultural studies, art, indigenous studies. But we also do, in addition to what you see on the shop floor, uh, the things that are in the collections. Uh, so we handle um, the curation and selection of objects. Uh, we handle the research that goes into the archaeology collections and the, the, the iceberg beneath the the tip that you see, which is the uh, exhibition. Uh, we do uh, research work, original publications. Uh, we do um, international partnerships. Uh, we do um, work with scholarly and uh, community organizations all across Canada and across the world. And very importantly, we also do vast amounts of work with uh, indigenous communities. And one of the strengths of the job actually is the variety of the work that's in it. And in addition, in addition to all of that, just me personally, I get to um, be curious every day. I get to read, I get to write, and uh, I get to work with um, 400 of the smartest people on earth. Uh, and so uh, part of the job, maybe the, one of the best parts of the job is that you are on a regular basis, the dumbest guy in the room, which is perfect. What do you enjoy most about your work? Uh, I enjoy a lot of things about my work. Um, picking the thing that I enjoy the most would be a little bit like uh, picking your favorite child um, from, a, from a lineup. But uh, on balance, I think every day, uh, I, I really enjoy the opportunity to be curious. Um, and I also have the opportunity to encourage the curiosities and the explorations of others. And so the, the core research team that I work with, my, my closest colleagues consists of about 40 people. And on any given day, there's probably 80 to 100 subjects that they're exploring in depth and breadth. And so I, I find myself constantly learning, uh, constantly listening, constantly asking questions. And uh, the good people I work with are, um, are, are, are decent enough, kind enough, and generous enough to educate me as I go along. 
Uh, there are other things that I like a lot as well, but principle among them, I think, would be what I take to be the relevance of the work that we do. Uh, I taught in universities, and I love teaching in universities, I particularly love teaching graduate students, but there's an immediacy to museum work and public history that I find lacking in other kinds of pursuits. Sometimes that can be quite inconvenient. Um, you know, there's an old adage that if you know um, uh, just what you don't know, put a text on a wall and a member of the public is very is sure very quickly to tell you. But there's, there's a relevance and therefore a feedback in that that's really, really quite empowering and um, quite, quite rewarding. And uh, I write an art academic article and someone uh, reads it about every month or so, and so I get 12 readers a year. Uh, I do a text in a museum, and uh, by the end of the year, a half a million or a million people have um, have visited it, and many of them uh, bother to tell you whether they liked it, disliked it, and what they liked and disliked about it. So in addition to being in a, a field that, that rewards my curiosity and encourages it and allows me to be curious with others, there's a, there's a feedback and a relevance and immediacy that is uh, nothing short of wonderful, uh, and you have it almost every day. What's the biggest challenge in your work? Well, right now the challenge is uh, conducting the you know, business of the realm from uh, being at home uh, and trying to do things by remote control, which we're managing and managing quite well, I think. But generally speaking, the biggest challenge is probably choice. Um, there really is no shortage of good ideas, uh, good projects, good suggestions, exhibitions, uh, you know, field, field digs to do. And the, probably the most challenging part of the job is uh, sifting amongst all of those and, and saying no to many of them. And so what we wind up doing as exhibits or books or articles or uh, archaeological digs is always a small subset of the things that we can do or could do or what people expect us to do. And so the, the, the difficult days are the ones in which you have to make uh, challenging decisions about how to allocate people's time and resources and, and frequently looking in the eyes of, um, of a petitioner or inquirer or an otherwise supportive member of the public or from a community and saying, that's a great idea, but I can't do it. And so I would say unbalanced, the toughest part of the job is um, most of the time is saying no. Uh, and uh, those are the days that you go home at the end of it and say, boy, I hope I made the right decision. Uh, and uh, occasionally there could be a stiff drink involved. And finally, what keeps you motivated? What keeps me motivated? Uh, from, from ground zero on out, I guess, the, most, um, the largest source of motivation in my life is my family, both the ones that are here uh, shuttered with me during the crisis, but also those uh, farther afield, notably my mom who is uh, 95 years old and who uh, li lives alone, uh, told us at the beginning of the crisis that she had enough food for one month and enough chips and candy for two. Uh, she since replenished in each category, but her, her mantra throughout her life, which she drilled into all of us, was uh, never be bored. Life is too interesting to be bored. And I've managed to fall into a career that has allowed me never, not even for five minutes, to be bored. Beyond that, I guess I'm surrounded by people, many of whom I've had the privilege of hiring, um, who are also never bored. And so uh, there can be days on which it seems to rain projects and to-dos, and days on which um, sometimes these are very, very difficult to do. It's never enough money or time or free meeting rooms. Um, but I, I take motivation from the fact that life is too interesting to be bored. And uh, my life from the moment my feet hit the, hit the floor in the morning to the time that I come home and hang out my coat at night are, are filled with these people who allow all of these things to, to occur. And so that may be a, a weak way, I guess a, a weak way of saying that I find motivation everywhere, but, but I really do. And um, years ago when I received the call from someone to say, hey, why don't you come to the museum and, and do work? It was, the, uh, it was the greatest call I ever had and the easiest answer I ever made and haven't regretted it for 20 seconds since. Thanks to Dean Oliver for taking the time to chat with us today. You're very welcome. All right, that's all from us. See you next time when we ask another public historian six questions in six minutes. Ish. <laughs>